Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today I am bringing you a guide on getting into fractals in the year 2020. This is a video I did back in 2017, but since the meta and everything has changed a lot since then, I decided to revamp it a little bit and get a more modern day perspective on getting into fractals. So, uh, who am I? I am Rayo, and I have led a guild called Mistlocked for the past couple years in the NA and EU servers. Uh, we do trainings multiple times a week, as you can see in our schedule right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug right now. If you want to join Mistlocked, or if you're getting into Fractals and you want to learn Fractals and you want to join our Discord server or the guild, go ahead and check out the link in the description and you can find some more information on that. But getting into this, what are Fractals? Fractals are tiered endgame content that helps you get into more organized content such as like raids and then fractals are a good good stepping stone to get into that end game content because it starts off a little bit easy and then it goes a little bit more difficult and so why should you do them? getting into fractals is one it's a very good source of daily gold it's very it's challenging so it kind of keeps your like pve skills refined a little bit especially keeps you up to date with your class and your rotations and everything it also gives you a solid chance if you do this regularly it gives you a solid chance of getting ascended gear just from doing dailies which is always really nice that's really helpful for gearing new characters and all that good stuff real quick on how to get here it's pretty easy all you got to do is zone into lion's arch and you just go to the southern part of the map near this little conch shell looking icon at the fort mariner waypoint fort mariner area so once you're here you can just go in through this portal and you will zone into fractals all right, so let's get right into it. So the first thing that you want to have when you're actually doing fractals is you want to have something to play. Of course, you're going to be logged on to something in order to do fractals, but to have an educated decision, I just want to go over a couple key points that you will experience, and it's good to kind of have these things in mind from the very beginning as opposed to progressing all the way to the end and then changing up how you play. General things to know when you're going into fractals is that one, it favors power over condition damage because the way that the encounters are set up is that they are kind of in intervals like short bursty intervals and so you want to be able in general not everything but most of the time it is you want to kind of be able to maximize the amount of damage you can do in a small window of time and condi specializes in fights where there's a lot of movement and there is a lot of like a burn phase or a burst window or a damaging time try and if you're going to go dps Try and favor a power build if that's within your realm. You can get away with Condi, despite what a lot of people say. You can get away with Condi, but just understand that people's expectations might not line up with that. So just always keep that in mind. Party composition consists of boon support, heals, utility, and damage. And when it comes to heals, that's kind of group dependent. When you get into more experienced groups, you can run without a healer, but keep in mind that this will take a, a lot of knowledge of the encounters that you're running. And also note that although healers might not be quote unquote optimal, most pug groups do run healers, so you can always get away with running a healer. Speaking on utility, that comes in the form of class-specific buffs, such as Assassin's Presence on Revenant, where this gives a ferocity bonus to all of my allies within range. There are multiple things like warrior banners, ranger spirits, all that good stuff that will help boost your party's damage or their defensives. Now, when it comes to choosing a class and a build, the first thing that you want to do is you want to choose a class that you actually enjoy playing, because if you're not enjoying playing, then what's the point of even playing a game if you're not enjoying playing it? So choose something that you enjoy. The second thing is familiarize yourself with the current meta. I'm not saying this to pigeonhole you into playing a specific role or a specific class, but to be fair to the rest of like the community that's either veterans or people who run the meta and just people who run things regularly and have a certain expectation, the community does have a general expectation when it comes to getting things done in X amount of time, yada, yada, yada. And that's just the way things work probably across all games. There is something that works the most efficient way possible. So people kind of revolve their builds and their characters around these builds. So when it comes to like playing DPS, there is like a general amount that when you're running organized content like tier fours or challenge modes or raise or something, people want you to be able to hit a certain threshold. That way the phases can happen in a regular amount of time. So that number, for instance, could be 30K. If you're playing a DPS class, but you are getting 3K, that's not really considered a DPS class benchmark. You want to be able to hit somewhere around those benchmarks. Now 30K is really high in fractals, but just for the sake of example. So all that to say, just familiarize yourself with the current meta. If you want to look up some effective builds, you can always refer to meta battle. This is more general builds. This will include healing. This will include more, I don't really want to use this term in like a negative way, but it does 
have more casual type builds or easier to build builds, then you can also, if you are looking to get more optimized, you can use a site called discretize.eu. They run speed clears and they provide builds that are most effective for fractals and optimized for fractals for quick phases and getting things done in a short amount of time. So if that's your style, definitely go with discretize. But if you're looking for like a broader, kind of more general sort of build website, you can go to metabattle.com, both of which I will put those links in the description. Alternatively, you can go to YouTube. There are people who will provide some decent in-depth guides. I've provided a couple myself with Alacrigate and Firebrand, which you can see in the card on the top right corner or in the description of this video. There's plenty of online resources, so do your research beforehand. And lastly, when it comes to doing your build and you want to kind of check up how you're doing and making sure that you are hitting those benchmarks that you set for yourself, there is something called ArcDPS that will tell you how much damage you are actually doing. This is good to track your progress. It will tell you your other party member's progress, so you can kind of see if you're in the realm of that party as well. And then there's also something called a Boon Table add-on that you can add onto ArcDPS if you are playing Boon Support. Use these. They are very helpful for your personal progress. I'll provide links to these in the video description as well, but just keep in mind, do not use these to bash your party members. These are used for personal help and guidance for other players who might need it, but do not, do not look down on other people for not meeting certain benchmarks. That's just not cool and it's not fun and we play games for fun, so let's be nice about it. All right, so moving on to our next topic, we are going to go into the core combat mechanics, and this is stuff that you will see all throughout end game content, stuff that you can actually even practice in open world, stuff that is just good to know for any sort of content, whether it's PvP, world versus world, PvE, anything. This is all general stuff that you can start practicing this second and will help you immensely. So first thing is going to be stacking. So stacking is very easy. If someone says stack on target, I have this champion mark one golem targeted. If they say stack on target, I'm going to stack on the target like so. Stacking means stand on this point. So whatever that point is, it could be the target, it could be your party member, stack there. So the point of stacking is to be within range of your healer and your boon giver. That way you get benefits from heals, you get benefits from boons, and then ideally the place to stack is going to be on the boss, so you can also get both of these things while you're killing your target. That is the best place to stack in most cases. So if someone says stack at boss, that means stand on top of each other as close as you can, and then stack on top of the boss so you can all be within range to receive all the support and dish out all the damage. So now let's talk about something called CC. CC is short for crowd control, and crowd control is something that damages this blue bar called a defiance bar on a target. You will see these everywhere. You'll see these in open world PvE, and you'll see these in raids, and you'll see these in fractals. There are different times that you want to break this bar. There's sometimes with certain encounters, there are specific times that you want to break this bar, but generally in fractals, I'm saying generally, I'm not getting into the, the finite details. When you see that this bar is blue, you want to break it. The way that you break it is not through normal damage, it's through something called crowd control, which if you look on my staff, you will see that the third little box down says knockback 120, and it says damage nine times. So what that nine times says is my staff, this attack is going to hit nine times. And that knockback is saying every time it hits, it's going to do 120 defiance bar damage. If this were a player that doesn't have a defiance bar, they would get knocked back 120 units every time they get hit by this skill. But something with a defiance bar is going to resist the knockback and instead take damage to this blue bar. So when I use this skill on the boss, it broke its bar. And it gets these two buffs, Stun and Exposed. Stun does is what it says, it stuns it for 5 seconds, and then Exposed will increase the opponent's damage intake by 50%, which is a nice thing to revolve your burst around. So, basically, break the bar, do your DPS burst, and get a lot of damage in on the boss. And then if you need a break from mechanics, break the bar, let your dodge rolls just regenerate a little bit, and then kind of reset the fight and get back to it. So moving on to the next topic is combo fields and finishers. So you can see that on this skill right here, it says combo field fire all the way at the bottom. And if you look on my staff four skill, it says combo finisher blast. So to generalize this topic, there are a lot of combo fields and there's four different combo finishers and there's a lot of different combinations that you can do. But generally speaking, this skill does everything that it lists and it's also a combo field. This skill does everything that it lists and it's also a combo finisher. I could use these skills as they are and receive their benefits as they are or if I were to use the combo field first and then the blast skill second, I will produce a secondary effect which would be, as you see, area might just popped up. So I ended up getting 
three might stacks. So you will generally see this a lot when it comes to something called boon stacking. You will see it in fights a lot. And honestly, when you're doing stuff in open world or anything, you'll notice that if you actually look at your skill descriptions, you'll see that you have a lot of finishers and combo fields in your skills. And so you might not even notice that you were doing combos unintentionally all the time. And you'll see these little hearts pop up and it'll say area something, or it'll say blindness or some sort of little pop up. Those are combos that are happening because a finisher is being used in a combo field. So I'm not going to go too in depth with all that stuff, but that's just kind of helpful to know from the beginning. And the last thing is line of sight. I don't know if this will work, but basically this guy's going to fight me and say, I want to lure this guy to a specific location. And line of sight is the line between my target and myself. So you see that he's got aggro of me and he he could attack me because he got in range, but because I ran out of his line of sight right here, he was forced to run around this obstacle in order to get to me. So let's see if I can actually pull this off. He might be bound to within the area, but because he's melee, he's forced to run around this obstacle in order to get to me. So that might not be the best description, but basically to sum all that up, you just want to get the aggro of a target, go behind an obstacle, let them filter in in a straight line, and then they stack up on top of each other all by themselves and what that does is if you look at my sword skills you will see that on my sword skills it says number of targets three so i could do damage to this one target or i could have three of them stacked up on the same spot and do the same skill with the same amount of effort and get three times the benefits out of it because it's hitting three different targets so basically line of sight is basically just a way to stack up your enemies and dps them down effectively now, I know that that was a big, 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 <laughs> big ramble, but those are important topics to know. Even if you don't get them all right now, they are good things to know for the future. So if you want to actually practice some of that stuff and want to get more in-depth explanations of that, I actually have done a video on the first three topics before. Not line of sight, but the first three topics, and I went more in-depth with them. And I'll link that video in the card in the top right corner, as well as the video description for you to check out. Okay, so we've gotten into fractals. We've chosen a build in a class that we like to play that is kind of effective with the rest of what the community standards are, quote unquote. And we kind of understand some basic combat stuff. So let's get into understanding how the interface works so we can go ahead and start working with this. So basically, two th one thing that you want to note, or two things that you want to note, is one, your personal fractal level. This basically says what fractal level you can open. There's 100 fractal levels that you can open. And so it caps out at 100. And then your personal agony resistance. Agony resistance we will get into in a little bit, but just kind of keep in mind that number in that little spot. So another thing that I want to point out when you're dealing with the fractal setting sequencer is you will see in tier two, tier three, and in tier four that when you hover over a fractal, you will see that there is something called a mist lock instability. Tier two, there's only one per fractal in all the tier. Tier three has two per fractal in all of that tier. And tier four has three per fractal in all that tier. These change every single day. And these mislock instabilities are typically debuffs that work against your party to make the encounter a little bit more difficult. And to add a little bit of variety, like I said, they change every single day. So just to kind of give an idea of what happens, like this mislock instability frailty is pretty easy to understand. It's pretty cut and dry. You're smaller and have 30% less health, but you move 25% faster. So for instance, if I'm playing on a guardian in full berserkers gear, I have like 11,500 11, health. That goes down to 8.3k or something along those lines, which is very a very low health pool because there's a lot of things that can do more than 8k damage in fractals. So I could easily get one shot in these higher tiers. So frailty is a tough one. There's a whole bunch of other ones. We're not going to get into all of them. Cut and dry of these things is that they are just something that works against your party to add a little bit more difficulty to the encounter that's already pretty difficult itself. So you will be seeing these quite a bit as you start to progress. And these things, especially in tier four, can make a huge difference. So the LFG tool, if you open this up, the fractal settings, you can do this at the fractal portal in Lion's Arch, or you can do it right here when you're inside the fractal lobby. But the LFG, you can also do it by just going into LFG. You will see that there's a tab for fractals of the mists. So if you're trying to LFG and you're brand new to this, you will see that you will only have access to initiate scales 1 through 25. 
And if I hover over this, you will see that the party's fractal scale box at the bottom of this pop-up says semicolon 100. Now that is me. It's not listing my name because I'm not in a party with anyone, but basically if I had a full party, everyone's names would pop up and it would tell me their personal fractal level. The way that your personal fractal level affects the LFG and instance opening is you can only open up the level of an instance that is relative to the highest personal fractal level in your party. So for instance, if you are brand new to fractals, you're level is going to be one. If you're in a party with me, as I have a hundred personal fractal level, we can open up any level that we want. But if I leave the party, you are restricted to only opening up level one. Another way that your personal level affects the LFG is that if you are just starting out, you will see that adept expert and master scales are grayed out. The only way that you can actually open up those LFGs is to get within the last five levels of your current tier. So if you are just starting out, in order to be able to open up the Adept Scales LFG, you need to be a personal level of 21 or higher. If you want to open up the Expert Scales LFG, you need to be level 46 or higher. And if you want to open up the Master Scale, you need to be a level 71 or higher. So personal level affects the amount of karma that you get from actually completing the fractal as well as the LFG and what fractals you can open. So kind of tying into that, let's kind of start tabbing into the level selector. So you notice that when you're selecting levels, sometimes you'll see these little purple circles. What these indicate is that they are a fractal daily. So I hover over this and you can see it's a little bit dark, but it says daily tier one snow blind. And then we have a daily recommended fractal scale 19. So there are two different types of dailies. There are daily tiered fractals and then there are daily recommended fractals. Recommended fractals have a specific set of rewards and then the daily tiered fractals have a random amount of rewards. So not to get too in-depth with this but just to give you a quick peek. So recommended fractal, you hover over it, it'll tell you it gives you a pristine relic, agony infusions, a large potion, encryptions, and a fractal research page. Now if we go back and you go over the daily tiered, you will actually be able to right click and preview the rewards. And this is like a random loot box that you can get each day with a chance at getting the very nice shiny Ascended Gear, which is probably the thing that most people run fractals for is this Ascended Gear and the gold that you can get. And on a note with the tiers, the higher the tier, the more loot you can obtain from those chests. Now, speaking on the dailies, you will notice that you will see daily tier one solid ocean, daily tier two solid ocean, daily tier three solid ocean, and daily tier four solid ocean. Basically, the tier dailies, there are three different ones every single day for a specific fractal. So that specific fractal today was Snowblind. So Snowblind is going to be a daily tier one, a daily tier two, daily tier three, and a tier four. Now, if I do this on tier one, I am going to get the daily tier one chest. If I do it on tier four, I am going to get the daily tier four, tier three, tier two, and tier one chest. So I could do virtually a similar amount of effort and get a lot more rewards just from doing it on the higher tier. So why not just start on doing it in the higher tier. The restriction is your agony resistance. So the agony resistance that you can see here, if I were to choose level 100, let's just go 150 is the maximum requirement that you'll ever need for fractals. This requires 150 agony resistance. Now, right over here is a little agony tester, and this will bring me into our next topic, which is agony. Now, if I don't have any agony resistance, my agony resistance number right now is 89, so I don't meet that 150 agony resistance requirement. What's going to happen is when I encounter agony inside of a fractal, I am going to basically instantly die like so. So this is your restriction when you are in fractals, is you will get hit by agony, and because you do not meet the requirements of that agony, you are going to take unavoidable damage that will nerf your healing into the ground. So let me re-equip everything that I just had, and then we will see how having agony will change the outcome here. So if I step on this now, I have 153 agony, as you can see. So as long as I have the amount that's, re that's recommended, I will be okay. I stand in, and the amount of damage I take is minuscule. So you'll see that because I have the recommended amount of Agni resistance, then I do not take that life-threatening damage. It is a percentage-based damage that you take depending on how much resistance that you have 
versus the amount that's required for a specific encounter. To sum it up, just have the recommended amount. It makes everything easier. Now, Agony doesn't proc randomly throughout the fractal. It happens based on certain mechanics inside fractals, but just have the amount of Agony resistance and you don't even have to worry about it. The thing is with Agony is it's not a cleansable condition, and you will see that when I hover over it, that it deals damage every second. It stacks intensity, reduces incoming healing and barrier application by 70% per stack. And that is multiplicative. So it's not like 70% for one stack and then 140% for the next stack. It averages in, so it can never be 100% healing reduction. All that to say, you will never get rid of that healing reduction. That is always going to be a thing. But what you can do is nerf the damage by having the right amount of agony resistance. So we understand how Agony works and we understand why we want to have Agony resistance. Now, how to obtain it is by actually doing fractals. Whenever you do fractals, you will be rewarded with Agony infusions as drops for completing a fractal as well as through your daily fractal chests. As you can see, when I hover over this, it says that it gives me a plus one Agony infusion. If I do the same thing for my Rex, it gives me another plus one Agony infusion. And you can get multiple per day from doing fractals. What you do once you have the infusion is you need ascended gear with an agony infusion slot, ascended plus gear. Ascended is the highest level. You can also get legendary, same stats, and basically functions the same exact way. So you can see when I'm hovering over my back piece, it says that I have two unused infusion slots. Any equipment that has an unused infusion slot can take agony infusions. So basically, if it has infusion in the name and you have an unused infusion slot, you can take that infusion and put it in that infusion slot. Now, although just ascended gear can slot agony, there are a couple items to kind of help get you started. If you max out a crafting discipline or get it to level 400 like chef or anything like that, you can make the ornate back piece which is a level 78 exotic back piece that has an agony infusion slot. And when you complete fractal level 20 for the first time, you will get something called a feedback loop which is not an ascended ring but an exotic ring that has an agony infusion slot. So those aren't something that you'll be using for forever but that is something to help give you agony resistance or to help slot some agony resistance and agony resistance as you can see will scale up the higher level that you do and agony starts once you hit level 20 fractals level 1 through 19 have no agony requirement so you are free to run in full exotic with no agony infusions up until you hit level 20 once you hit level 20 you are going to start seeing some agony checks going on so you can see if i hover over this it says eight agony recommended at the top right corner of the pop-up box swamp land says 10 cliffside says 11 and it just goes up by about one or two every single level all the way up to 150 for fractal level 100. So kind of segueing into the next topic is shooting for 150 agony resistance right from the beginning. So I'm not going to go crazy with this, but we've talked about how you need ascended armor and trinkets and back piece. You basically need full ascended. There are some exceptions, but I'm not going to go into those exceptions because the exceptions would be something called augmenters, but Augmenters are something that you shoot for once you've been doing fractals for a long time. So we're not even going to talk about that. We're going to speak within the realm of no augmenters and starting from zero. First off, you need full ascended armor, weapons, and trinkets, and back piece. Your rings, if you have an expansion, can have up to three slots. If you're free to play, they can only have two slots each, and your back piece can have two slots through infusion. So your back piece, infuse, your infused back piece can cost quite a bit. It can cost a stack of ectos plus some other materials, and then infusing your rings, as you can see right here, this ring is attuned and infused. If you have expansion, so if you are not free to play, you can have the attuned prefix and the infused, infused suffix which gives me three slots to work with not going into super big details but pulling this off of the wiki if you are a free account you can have a max of 16 infusion slots between all your sets of gears so the most cost effective way to get 150 agony resistance on the dot if you have 16 slots filled out that's six from armor two from your active weapon set you have four in total between weapons but you only get the stats of your currently equipped weapons so that's just a side note and then you can get two from your back piece two from both of your accessories your ascended amulet doesn't have an infusion slot it's just just an enrichment slot and then your rings can have if you're free to play up to two so that is four six eight plus six plus another two which would be 16. cost effective combo would be 10 plus nine infusions and if you're using a class with a weapon swap like i am i would need to add two more of those infusions because for instance if i were to swap my weapons and this had agony infusions and this didn't then my agony rating would go down 
by the amount of agony that I don't have in my secondary weapon set. So you basically just want to get an extra two of the cheapest infusion and put it into your, your weapons. So basically 10 plus nine infusions, 12 if you have two weapon sets, and then six plus 10 infusions. And that'll give you 150 agony resistance. Now, if you are a account that has Pat the Fire or Heart of Thorns or any sort of expansions, then you will be able to get 18 agony slots with full ascended, everything basically with the free to play accounts. And then you also have the attuned prefix on your rings. So you will be able to get two more agony slots, which will actually reduce the cost by quite a bit when it comes to getting 150 agony resistance. So the way that that would change your cost efficient method here would be two plus sevens in your weapons. And once again, double that if you want or add two to that if you want to have it in your secondary weapon set or if you're running a class that has two weapon sets. Eight plus eight infusions and eight plus nine infusions. Now, keep in mind, those combos are including an infused back piece, which is pretty costly. So you want to consider that you might not infuse your back piece, but there are other combos on the wiki. So make sure that you check out the video description and I've put a link to the wiki page in the video description if you want some more in-depth explanations of said things. Now, when it comes to building 150 Agni resistance from the start, I know it can be intimidating. It's a lot of numbers, but this is something that I've actually done on an alternate account after understanding how to do it in the first place. So if you want to link to the video series, it took me 42 days of just doing fractal dailies casually to get from zero AR to fully ascended and fully kitted with 150 Agni resistance. So this is starting with no crafting levels. This is starting on a fresh level 80 boosted new account with no sort of big achievements on it already so i had to do everything from scratch so if you want to see that i'll put the video playlist in the card in the top right corner as well as the video description all right so quick recap we talked about choosing a build that you like to play and something that works with a party composition we talked about core combat mechanics talked about the fractal interface daily rewards as well as the mistlock instabilities talked about agony and agony resistance and we talked about building to 150 agony resistance ourselves and that pretty much wraps everything up so kind of keeping this in mind from the very beginning at least in the back of your head will set you up for a lot more success in fractals so just practice these things when you can from the beginning and you'll be doing yourself a huge favor as you progress and that is all i have for you today guys i know this was pretty lengthy there's a lot of info here but this is a comprehensive guide and fractals are not a simple topic there's a lot to talk about here i hope that this guide could really help you out and help you get started so if you would like further help and you would like some personal help then i do run a guild as i mentioned earlier in the video called mistlock on both the na and the eu servers where we do regular fractal trainings and we also do raid trainings so if you'd like to get involved with that comment down below ideally use the discord link provided with this video because that'll be a lot easier to track invites uh, but it's not required that you join the guild for training you can also just join the discord server and make sure you join there get the proper roles and we'll get you into some trainings now also if you want to see these trainings then you can also subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like and comment to help support the channel. If you want to see more trainings like this, I do post trainings here for both Fractals and Raids. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified. And I also stream our trainings. So make sure to follow me on Twitch because I do that pretty frequently. And also follow me on Twitter for any sort of updates, any sort of new things happening, and just to follow me around, I guess. Now lastly, if you are free to play and you want to expand your journey interior with Heart of Thorns and Pat the Fire to experience more content, Elite Specialized, and even unlock those two agony slots on those rings to make your 150 AR journey a little bit easier, then I am a partner of ArenaNet and you can choose the links in the video description to buy an expansion or if you're just starting out with Guild Wars, you can choose the link to go to free to play and test the game out yourself to see if you like it. Both of these links do help this channel and they are sponsored by ArenaNet. So if you would like to start playing, please use those links as they help me out a lot, they help this channel out a lot and it'll help you out a lot. Once again, everyone, I'm Rayo. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide, and I'll see you next time. Take care.